Okay, this one's going to be a dual purpose uh, video on basically how to uh, troubleshoot shorts on a tube amplifier where it blows to fuse and uh, shorts out as uh, soon as you um, uh, fire it up or turn on the high voltage. Now mind you, some uh, amps uh, have a high voltage turn on relay. So the high voltage is only uh, applied when you key it down. So on those amps, uh, the high voltage, if it had a short, it would only show when you key the amp down on those that have the uh, high voltage relay. But most uh, grounded grid amplifiers like this one do not have that. They apply the high voltage uh, onto the tube as soon as you fire the uh, amp up, as soon as you turn the amp on. Um, also on this video, because it's so similar, is what I do to rebuild a uh, sweep tube or grounded grid amplifier. Actually, I do it with uh, pretty much any tube amplifier. You know, these old boxes are 40, 50, 60 years old. Uh, this one is a uh, Thunderbolt 305 that I picked up at Dayton. And I would say this thing is made in the uh, 70s. So, you know, the thing is you know 40 50 years old right so the first thing I do uh, is get rid of the electrolytic capacitors um, I have the camera on the mounts but anyway I got the capacitors down here these were the original ones uh, 80 uh, UF at 450 volt and we put in some um, 100 UF 450 volt uh, high temperature too so they'll hold up to the uh, high temperature uh, better than the originals. The originals I believe were 85 degree and the uh, new replacement ones are 105 degrees so they hold up to the heat a little bit better. Um, so first thing I do uh, even before I test the amp whether the capacitors look good or not is I rip out the capacitors, uh, the high voltage capacitors, which were these three guys here. Um, I remove all three, um, you know, get replacement form. And before I put the replacements back in, since the capacitors out, I do a couple of tests. Um, these here, it's one in between there you can't see it and it's another one over here under there hard to see but they are the bleeder resistors uh, the bleeder resistors can open and often due to age alone and heat they start going high and they get mismatched um, if the bleeders are mismatched then um, what happens is that the bleeders are also equalizing resistors. A bleeder resistor has three purposes. One is to drain or bleed the um, capacitor when you turn the amplifier off. If it had no bleeder resistors at all, which some, amp, some sweep tube or CB amps do, then the thing could hold a charge for forever. Um, I got zapped by a TV once that was off for um, a couple months playing around with the thing and uh, it still held a charge and zapped me good. Um, I think I've told that story before. It was actually a video game at the uh, bus station. I was working on the video games at the bus station and got zapped and yelled out and uh, thought I was going to be embarrassed but nobody played me at any attention you know at the bus station but um, the three purposes of a bleeder to get back on track are to bleed the charge out of the resistor so you turn it off leave it off for a couple minutes if the bleeders are working right um, it'll remove all the charge off the bleeders um, light bleedy bleeders take longer it's less resistance or should I say higher resistance um, it's going to take a longer time to bleed, but they work, you know, just fine. And lower uh, resistance of a bleeder, it just bleeds it faster. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Because, you know, heavy bleed is also heavy heat and wasted power. But that's another thing. I'm just trying to um, 
keep it basic. So bleeder resistors bleed to capacitors. Bleeder resistors also on a capacitor bank where you have multiple to multiple capacitors like this amp has three here some higher voltage amps might have you know 10 of these in series to handle the high voltage so not only do the bleeder resistors bleed they also equalize the voltage so the voltage would be um, go equally across each capacitor but what happens over time if the uh, bleeder slash equalizer resistor uh, they get out of tolerance so these are 330k uh, resistors and they're new and they're uh, like 1% tolerant so they're very accurate uh, but these old ones in there here old carbon resistors and carbon resistors over age and heat and time their uh, values go up and they uh, get out of tolerance so they're not equal all these old ones here um, once I took the caps out I measured the bleeder uh, resistors um, because in circuit since each bleeder is going across each cap the cap is interfering with your uh, resistance measure of the bleeder so again first I rip out the capacitors then I test the uh, bleeders and these were way out of tolerance. They're supposed to be 390, 390K, and they read like 410, 440, 450, 4 to 3. So they are drifting up and out of tolerance. So they won't bleed, they won't equalize equally with them being out of tolerance like that. So I put in um, new equalizer bleeder resistors um, while I had the caps out and measured the bad ones. And then next, even before I fire up it up and especially if the amp is uh, blowing a fuse is I check and test the uh, power supply diodes which are these here mounted on this board here so I put the meter on diode tests and then get out my leads and hopefully don't bump the camera and knock it out of way and this one goes from ground I believe that leads go this way come on don't knock the camera over all right I'm on diode test and I should get about 0.5 across each style you can see it on the meter and going to the next one come on now where are you there we go can you see it anyway 0.5 it beeps to tell me 0 0.5 0 0.5 a lot of times diodes are short especially if you're blowing fuses you might have a shorted diode so you know get a multimeter put it on diode test make sure you're unplugged and don't have a charge in there and I go across the diode string before I power it up um, if it had a short my meter would show something like this where I got the leads together and on diode tests a lot of meters have the beeper and uh, that's what you'll get with a shorted diode of course you can get an open one where it won't uh, read anything at all just an open circuit but anyway you should get about 0.5 across the diodes and all those are good so uh, normally if the diode string is good I don't replace it and this looks like it's got 3 amp uh, thousand volt diodes in it anyway which is you know pretty good for a sweep tube amp so I leave that in there but if um, so that's what I do to rebuild just to start with before I um, fire it up I take out the caps and once those are out before I put the new ones in I test the uh, bleeder equalizer resistors to make sure they're uh, good and intolerant if they're out of tolerance and reading all over the place and bad I replace those and also I check the uh, diodes and that's on an amp that I think is working on any amp that I rebuild now if you got a short um, for me it's pretty much the same process if you got a dead short uh, the first thing I do is remove the tubes 
and then fired it up and see if you still got a short. And I actually use a Variac uh, when I do this too. I just don't plug it in and, and turn it on because that's not good if you got a short. It's not going to be good for the transformer. And eventually, if the transformer is good, you're going to blow it anyway. You keep uh, changing the fuse and uh, hitting it hard like that. I just plug it in. So um, I got a Variac and I, um, for short, and when I replace the capacitors first time fire up, you know, I don't know if this amp is working or not. I want to put it on a Variac and slowly ramp it up. But you got a short. Take out the tubes, uh, replace your fuse, put it on a Variac, uh, slowly turn it up see if the short is still there right um if it's still there um next thing i do is um disconnect the capacitors since these are in series you can only pull you can pull one leg out of it and that would disconnect the capacitor bank and then slowly fire it up and still if you see if you got a short if that doesn't do it um i disconnect the um diode string and right here this these two red and blue wires these this has two transformers kind of like a Maverick 250 does or a Firebird 500 and this is the high voltage coming in so I disconnect the high voltage you know right here that's why I picked this amp it's kind of easy to see and easy to get to stuff so you still got a short disconnect the high voltage wires and then uh, put it on the Variac change the fuse fire it up you still got a short disconnect the low voltage, which is usually the filament and the uh, low voltage for the transformer. Uh, fire it up. See if you still got a short. Um, you know, when it starts working, you have found your short, whatever you just disconnected. However, if you disconnect the high voltage and the low voltage, you know, all the outputs of the transformer and it's still shorting, you got a shorted transformer, uh, which is the most expensive uh, thing to find and replaced uh, so anyway uh, one more thing I said there are three purposes of a bleeder resistor and one is to bleed the capacitor uh, the other is to equalize the capacitor bank and I didn't mention the third yet anybody know the third right quick huh add a boy to whoever does but um, the third thing that these resistors do is they put a minimum load on the uh, high voltage. So the, vi the high voltage doesn't surge and uh, it helps regulate it by putting a couple watts of load on it at all times. Um, so it helps regulate it, um, help keeps the surge down, helps uh, uh, with the AC ripple a little bit by um, uh, toning down the peak of it and the surge of it a little bit so it does those three things all at once so it's good to have equalizing resistors slash bleeder resistors slash minimum load resistors so that's going to be it for this one again i um always replace the caps check my bleeders and most of the time in these old amps they need replacing uh, you want them to be, uh, you know, 99% of intolerance of each other. So if one is 100K, you don't want the other one to be 120K or whatever, you know, just to throw a number out there. You want them all to be 100K if one is 100K. And um, always check my diodes before I fire it up. And especially if there's a short, I start at the tubes. And work my way back from the high voltage to tubes, to caps, to diodes, and then the transformer itself. And hopefully you find it and it's not the transformer. Because again, transformers are hard to replace. But anyway, that's what my uh, Thunderbolt 305 looks like underneath. Uh, one driving three. We're going to do some upcoming videos on uh, the rest of it, putting it together. Um, these the old caps out of it. And that's the old bleeder. Uh, resistors out of it. Um, all right, as if for this one. Bye.